uh, I have discussed about the the concept of uh, what we call uh, of the two-way ANOVA with application. Uh, hopefully, if, if uh, the concept are clear when I discuss about the uh, example. Okay. So if you don't have any question, I would like to move to the uh, next part that will be the interaction plot. Okay, class interaction plot is important. Uh, since uh, uh, for one way ANOVA, uh, one way ANOVA only involves simple concept, but for two way ANOVA with application, uh, it will involve the interaction. And in this case, we are going to uh, talk further about the interaction in terms of how we can find it based on the plot. Okay, now let's say you are given. Uh, go back to your data just now. You are given this particular data that you need to find or you need to uh, what we call perform the two-way ANOVA with application. Okay, so if uh, let's say you are being asked, okay, without your ANOVA table, okay, without the ANOVA result, okay, how can you make conclusion or how can you uh, describe about the interaction between uh, low level of factor A with low level of factor B, high level of factor A and uh, low level of factor B. The same goes to low and high for this one and high high for this particular uh, response level. So the way we can uh, find out whether there is an interaction without performing the hypothesis testing is by plotting the interaction plot. Okay, now remember class. Okay, this is the summary of your uh, ANOVA table just now. Okay, if let's say you are being asked to uh, draw your interaction plot, okay, so this is how we can draw them. Okay, um, what is interaction plot? Okay, interaction plot is defined as a plot of means. For each level of one factor, with the level of the second factor will be held constant. Means that, okay, if you are talking about factor A and factor B, uh, if you are talking about factor level of factor A, then the second level will be constant. Okay, so if you are looking toward the angle of factor B, okay, so you are looking for, for factor B, then a will become constant. So it means that if you are looking or uh, if you have factor, okay, if you have factor A, you have factor B, you wish to look at this, you want to view from this view from the angle of A, then this becomes constant. And if you want to view for, from the angle of B, so you view from B angle, and factor A become constant because you can only draw by using either one of factor A or factor B because later on you will see your X axis will refer to any of the factors. If you are talking about factor A here, then you will have the level low here, high here. Then here will be referring to your factor B. Okay. So the same goes to if you are using your factor B as your view. Okay, so you are using factor B, low, high, then your interaction here is based uh, on uh, where you have your uh, factor A. Okay, so that's how we, uh, we, uh, we do the interaction plot. Now, from this particular summary, you can uh, you can uh, just take the average value given from your summary. The first one will be for low, low is 32. Okay, we are referring to the average. And for low, high, we have 44.5. For high of factor A and low of factor B, we have 14.5. High, high, we have 25. Put it inside your table of means. So this is what we call table of means. Okay, table of means. Just now is table of total, right? 
Now, we are talking about table of mean. So, if you are talking about table of total, then you are taking this. Okay? Okay, you are talking, you are talking about these four values. The same goes to yeah, the total. Okay? Now, how can we do uh, the interaction plot? Okay, from here, okay, remember, if you take this, then this becomes constant. If you take this, then this becomes constant. So, in this case, okay, interaction plot between factor A and B indicates split interaction between the factor on the response variable. Now, how, how this interaction plot gives you this particular comment, okay, weak interaction. Okay, now, note that the lines factor B1, okay, you are talking about factor B1, so this is B1, and this is B2, okay? Now, for B1, low level, smooth line, okay, low, B1 low, to high, okay? Now, what can you see? They are almost parallel. Okay, almost parallel. If it is parallel, 100% parallel, means that the difference here will be the same. Okay, if it is the difference is 4, then this also 4. This is what we call parallel line. Okay, but in this case, they are not really parallel because if you deduct this particular uh, value, okay, you will have different uh, value of difference between these two lines, okay? So, we can see almost parallel indicating weak interaction. So, if you have this parallel line, means that no interaction, okay? So, you, if you have almost parallel, that's why we call it weak interaction. Then, how uh does the interaction plot looks like if this is weak this is no interaction then interaction will be uh, defined as this particular form if you can have this particular form or you can have this particular form okay we will see a few examples afterwards okay so this is what we call there is there could be an interaction. There could be an interaction because uh, we can always, always say interaction if we perform the hypothesis test. But based on the plot, we can also, all, always assume that there could be interaction. Okay? But now, uh, since we are discussing about the example that we have done just now, it seems that Based on the ANOVA test, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. In this regard, the main impact affects the A and B can be interpreted independently. It means that, so in this case, since we have uh, tested that this particular weak interaction is considered no interaction at all. So we have tested that here. Okay, so it seems that we fail to reject the null hypothesis, means that there is no interaction. And when this happens, we are going to look at factor A and factor B independently. And what we have done is this just now. Okay, we have proved that factor A and factor B got effect to the response variable. Now, class, do you have any questions so far? Any questions so far? Class? Let me stop sharing for a while. Okay, now, just now we are talking about how we can plot the interaction plot based on the, uh, what we call the table of means. Okay, now, if you are, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't show you how you can plot, okay? Let's say if we are talking about this particular plot, let's say, I'm taking this as an example for, uh, for us to do. Okay, so, so in this case, if let's say I would like to see from the angle of factor A here, I have low here. 
I have high. Okay. And I look for my value. The least uh, is 14. Okay, let's say I begin with 15. And 15 until 45. Let's say 5. Uh, 10 lah. Okay, 25. 35. And then 44. Okay. So now we are talking about low for level A. Low for level A, we begin with low, low. So we have 32. Right? 32. Let's say 32 here. Okay. And then we have, uh, then we have 14.5. Okay. 14.5. Where is 14? Low for 32, high for 14. 14.5, let's say somewhere over here. Okay, this is your first line. This is for low and high for factor A, but B low, right? So B low. Okay, so B low. So that's why we have this particular uh, B low. Now, next, we are talking about low for factor A, but high for factor B, I have 44.5. Okay, 44.5. Okay, let me put it uh, this way. And then I have 25 for high. Okay, then I have this particular line. So that's how we plot. But if you wish to plot uh, using the B angle, okay, so let's say this is B, this is low, this is high. Okay, so let's say 15, 25, 35, 45, because interaction plot, you will have to do it on your own. Your Excel will not going to give you the interaction plot. Okay, so for B low, Okay, you have B low will be 32. Okay, 32. And then B low, B high will be 44.5. 44.5. B low, A1. Okay, just now here, then now here. 32 and 44.5. 44.5 will be somewhere over here. So this is for A low. Right. And then we have the second one will be low for B, that is 14. Okay, let's say I change the color. So 14. So the way your interaction plot will be different. Different if you look at the different angle. So uh, 14.5 for low of factor B and high is 25. Okay, so this is your A high. Okay, see, you will have different uh, interaction plot if you look at different B. Okay, any questions so far, plus? So imagine if you have another uh, level of factor B, for example. If let's say you have another level of factor B, okay, class, so please make sure you know how to add to your interaction plot. So let's say you have somewhere here, and then you have also here. So there will be three together. Okay, so you will have to add one more uh, level of your factor. And clear class? Class? Is it clear? Is it clear class or is it uh is it okay? Yeah. Okay, so I, I believe some of you uh, might be still wondering, so it's okay. Uh, go back and then do it on your own, draw it on your own. Okay, it will be much easier 
uh, if you do it on your own. You just uh, you do it on your own and you experience on how to choose what level to what level and which to draw, which uh, line to draw. Okay, so let us look at the example 4.6. Okay, example 4.6 is different from what you have in 4.5 because 4.5 you have uh, no interaction. But now the example want to show you what if you have interaction and how does the uh, ANOVA uh, test is being carried out. Okay, so in this case, uh, and this interaction. Okay, how how we would do uh, for this particular case? Now, example four point six. You can find it on page uh, hundred and forty one. Okay, hundred and forty one. Let's say you are given almost the same setting, but now uh, you need to test whether there is an interaction of factor A and B effect or not. Now, almost similar, come up with the statement of your interaction, statement of your uh, factor A and factor B. Then generate your uh, ANOVA table. Now, I would like to show you how you can uh, generate your ANOVA table. Okay, let me show you. Uh, Can you see my slide? I change to Excel class. Class? No, no, dear. no okay. Oh, it's a black okay. screen. Okay, separate screen. Then I need to stop sharing and then I need to choose the Excel. Excel. Okay, this is my Excel. Okay, now I would like to show you. Uh, how we can uh, come up with the uh, uh, how to perform the ANOVA test for two way ANOVA using the previous example? Okay, now this is your first uh, example just now. Okay, uh, I don't think it will be similar. Lah. I think this straight away to the um, second example. Okay, I have this table. Okay, imagine you come up with this table exactly, you put in exactly what you are given in your textbook. And then what happened? Now, we are going to do the uh, gener generating the ANOVA uh, table using Excel. Go to data. Okay, go to data analysis. Okay, and then go to ANOVA to factor with reputation. Okay, and then choose the data. Okay, you can choose the data. By using the low and high, by including the low and high. Okay. Now, row per sample, we have two. So, he is two. And then the alpha is 0 0.05. And then I would like to have my input somewhere over here. Okay. And then, okay. Okay. So, you will see your is are given in this particular form. Okay, you can enlarge the, the row and the column based on your need. So, if you can see, okay, you have generated the summary table. This is for factor A low and factor B high and factor B, factor A high and factor B low and high. And then you have the total given here. Okay, so this one is for the uh, uh, factor A and factor B low and high. This is for the total, okay, and then this is your ANOVA table given to you. So you have your SS, DF, M mean square, F test, P value, and F critical. Okay, so this is what I have been uh, copying from, and then I got your uh, what we call your your slides as well. Okay, so let me stop sharing this part. Then we go back to the um slide this now. Okay. Now let's assume that you have got this particular uh table. So this one is uh I took from the summary table to come up with the uh table of mean. Okay, I have my table of means here. Okay, my table of means. 
Okay, here based on the average value for the remember low low I got the average value low high average value high low average value high high average value and I put into my table of means. Okay, so this is my table of means. From my table of means, I put into my uh, in, uh, what we call an interaction plot. Okay, so when you plot, okay, let's say we uh, begin with B factor A. Since we are talking about the uh, from factor A, then uh, for low level of factor A, we have 57 and uh, for the A low and high is 58. Okay, so 57 and 58 high. So 1 is for low, 2 is for high. Okay, low, high. So this is the first line. Okay, the first line. And the second line is for low for factor A but high for factor B. So this is for B low. And this one is for factor B high. Okay, so for high for factor B, it's 87. Low for factor A, but high for factor B. So low for factor A, and high for factor A, 147.5. So you will get this particular uh, interaction plot. So you can see here, the line is not parallel. Okay, so we believe that so if we have this particular situation, we believe that there, there could be an interaction between factor A and factor B. So that's how we uh, identify whether we can uh, we can identify whether there is an interaction or not between the two factors if you are not uh, using any hypothesis testing for the interaction. Okay, so uh, there is a note here. Note that the line for factor B1 Okay, smooth line and B2 dotted line are not parallel, so there could be an interruption. Okay, so now let's move to the uh, ANOVA table that given in your Excel result. Now from here, since uh, we believe that there could be an interruption, we test for the interaction first. Okay, so look for the interaction. Okay, so look for the interaction. So this will be your interaction value. Now, for the F critical value, F alpha, okay, so of, of, uh, of your F uh, interaction, so since we are using the same, almost uh, everything the same, so our FCB is still 7.71. And for the test statistics obtained by this particular column, that is 53.6797. Okay, so from here, okay, how? Can we make our division? Okay, so we have our F test, and then we are talking about 7.71. So this is where the alpha 0 0.05, and this is so F uh, alpha or FCV that is 7.71. And then we have your F test very small. This is very end of your distribution. So in this case, your F if let's say this is your F test, which is 53.97, falls in the rejection region, and this is your p value, where your p value is equal to 0 0.0018. Okay, so definitely in this case, reject the null hypothesis. When we reject the null hypothesis, it means that there is sufficient evidence to conclude that there is an interaction between factor A and factor B on the response variable. Okay, so since the interaction effect is significant, the individual effect of factor A and B on the response variable will not be tested. So please understand this class. Eh? Once you have uh, uh, identified based on your hypothesis testing that there is no, there is an interaction, okay, so there will be no, there will be no need for you to test for the factor effect. Okay, so this concept sometimes will be asked okay, in your conceptuations, two forms and multiple choice between. Okay, so please uh, remember them and understand them. Okay, 
so far? Uh, do you have any question, class? Do you have any question so far, class? Okay. Any questions so far, class? Doctor. No. Eh? Okay. Uh, since I, I I cannot ask you too much questions because uh, I need to cover the the content of the chapter four. Okay. So the next uh yeah, uh discussion will be how to interpret the interaction effect. Okay. How to the, how can we interpret the interaction effect from your uh what we call table of means. Okay. Now you can uh, look at this particular discussion on page hundred and forty three. Okay, so look at on page hundred and forty three. There is a section about uh interpreting the interaction effect. Okay. Uh. Okay. Now, let's say you have this particular table of means. Okay. Now we have seen how we can find this table of means from your summary given in your uh, Excel result. Okay, so from here we can how can we interpret the interaction effect? Okay, now look at this particular A1 level. Okay, now what happened here? Okay, at A1. Changing from D1 to D2 means that moving from D1 to D2, okay, we, we begin with 57, the average for low low, to low high is 87.5, okay. So the mean response increased by 30.5. So how do we get 30.5? Okay, 87.5 minus uh, 57. So you will get increasing by 13.5 units. So this is for uh, A1 level. What about for A2 level? Okay, A2 level. Okay, changing from D1 to D2, from 58 to 147.5, increase by 89.5 units. Just now here. 30.5 Okay, so what happened? The increment between the mean responses for factor D, for factor D, we are talking about factor D, at A1 and A2, from A1 to A2, are not equal. Why? Obviously, we have 30.5 and we have 89.5, not equal. Okay, so not equal. So how do we interpret the change in the one factor, say factor A, level is not the same as the other factor, factor B. Okay, resulting in not parallel line. So this is go, this goes back to the understanding. If you don't have a parallel line, so it will be indication of interaction exists. Now, what if we look for uh, factor B1 level? At both factor A low and high. At B1, okay, at B1, okay, move from 57 to 58. So the mean response increased by one unit. And for high of level B, okay, high for level B, so changing from A1 to A2, okay, so here 87.5 to 147.5. 60 units. Okay, the increment between the mean responses for factor A level at B1 and B2 are not equal. Again, they are not equal. So that's how we get the not parallel one. Okay, so that would be interpreting the interaction effect. So the rest of the uh, what we call discussion, I wish you can um, uh, look at your textbook. Okay. Uh, if you can see from your textbook, okay, there are some notes that you need to understand and remember. The first one is that the interaction effect represents 
the combined effect of factor A and B on the response variable. Definitely. Because we are talking about this one is low, low. Low level of factor A and low level of factor B. Low level of factor A, high level of factor B. Okay? High level of factor B, but low level of factor A. High level of factor A and high level of factor B. So, this particular combination, okay, okay, that's why we say that interaction effect represent the combined effect. There must be an effect of A and B. Okay, when an interaction effect is present, the impact of one factor depends on all level of the other factor. Okay, you can see from here just now. Okay, how can one level impact to the other level, both level of factor B. Low level of factor A impact the low level and high level of factor B. If there is no interaction effect between the factors, then the effect of one factor is the same at all, at all level of the other factor. Means that if there is no interaction, that's why we have this particular parallel, parallel line. Okay? So if parallel line means that there is no interaction, right? So when there is no interaction, no change in the loop. Okay, so there will be the same level at all factors. Okay, now I would like to just glance through several uh, what we call uh, example. Okay, so that will be uh, interpreting the main effect. Okay, so my uh, homework for you, okay, is to look for the uh, okay, uh, I don't want to give you as a homework, but I would like to discuss how we can. So, this one is how to identify uh, uh, different what we call different pattern of uh, interaction. And no interaction. Okay, so that's how uh, we can uh, go by the interaction plot to see whether there is any interaction or, uh, or not. Okay, and in terms of what we call the uh, main effect and no interaction effect, you, you can also find from this particular uh, interaction plot. Okay, now if let's say you have this. The first example of this particular plot. Okay, what happened is that your low level of factor B and high level of factor B are redundant on the same line. Okay, they got the same exact value five, 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 five. five. Okay, so in this case, what happened is that okay, so in this case, you can all just say there is no mean effect and there is no interaction effect. So in this case, main effect A and main effect B are not significant. Okay, and the interaction also not significant. Class, can you understand this class? The first uh, inter uh the first plot. In this case, factor uh interaction effect. Okay, so in this case, interaction not significant. Okay, and factor A also not significant. Okay, and factor B also not significant. Means that all of the factor and interaction are not significant. Okay, in this case, what happened last? There could be a mislead or mistake in terms of choosing the level of factor A as well as level of factor B. Because it seems that by uh, even though there is if there is no interaction, but if you have factor A effect and factor B effect, that it should be okay. But now everything got no effect. Okay, so th there must be something wrong with the setting of the experiment. Okay, so in this case, you can see clearly there is no increase or decrease in terms of uh, the means values. Okay, 
So that's why we call it no effect of factor A, no effect of factor B, and they are parallel. Since they are parallel, that's why we call it no interruption effect. Uh, understand class for this one? Class? I have uh, seven more to go. <laughs> Do you understand this class? Class? You all with me? Okay. Okay, yes, yeah? doctor. Okay. Now, what if we have this particular form? Okay. You see, uh, we are talking about factor A, low and high, and we have factor B, low and high. But again, your factor B and factor A are redundant on the same line. What happens if we have this particular form? Okay. From this particular form, we will know that it is parallel. Okay. Parallel line means that it reflects no interaction. But what about uh, main effect of factor A and factor B? You can check. For factor A, okay, so for factor A, go for row, so we get this. Okay, we find the average value of factor A. Okay, you have 2 and 2, low for B1, low for B, uh, high for B2. We find the average, we get 2. For A, uh, second level of factor A, okay, you got the average value is 8. Okay, so in this case, there is an increase of A. A increase. What happened is that in this case, you got effect of factor A. Okay, but what about factor B? Look for factor B. It seems that for factor B, go by column. So 2 plus 8 divided by 2, you get 5. 2 plus 8 divided by 3, you get 5. So from low level of factor B to high level of factor B, there is no increase. So in this case, no increase means that no main effect of factor B. So that's how we uh, can uh, imagine what would be our hypothesis result. Okay, so for the interaction, there could be no interaction. And for the main effect, only factor A significant. Factor A, significant. Means that we reject our hypothesis for factor A. But for factor B, not significant. Okay, means that we fail to reject significant. We fail to reject the null hypothesis of factor A. Uh, sorry, factor B. Okay, what about the third one? Okay, in this case, still parallel okay so that's why we don't have any interaction effect but when we check for factor a and factor b it seems that for factor a row wise there is no increase or decrease so here we can say there is no main effect so not significant for factor a okay but for factor b since there is an increase so we can say there is an effect of factor b Okay, so that's how we uh, identify the effect of interaction, uh, the effect of factor A and factor B as well as the interaction between A and B towards the response diagram. Now, next, still parallel. Okay, once parallel, no interaction. And then what about the effect? Okay, it seems that the uh, rule wise got changed, increased. So there is an effect of factor A, but for factor B decrease, then it also reflects there is an effect of factor B. So both are significant. Okay, means that reject null hypothesis of factor A. Reject null hypothesis of factor B. Okay, so next. Main effect of factor A, main effect of factor B, and there is an interaction effect. Not parallel means that there is an interaction effect. What about the main effect? Since there is a decrease, exists main effect A, exists main effect B. So that's how you can see that all the three are significant. But once you know that there is an interaction, we know that we spot at the interaction effect. No need to check for the 
uh, main effect. Okay, and for the number six would be, okay, since they are not parallel, there is an interaction effect, but what about the effect of factor A and factor B? For factor A, decrease, so means there is an effect of factor A, and no increase for factor B, and we can say there is no effect for factor B. Okay, but in terms of interaction-wise, even though factor B got no effect, but when they interact between A and B, they give an interaction result. Means that the response variable are being uh, influenced by the interaction effect. And then the uh, the number seven, okay, second last, okay, if you have this particular uh, figure interaction plot, it not parallel. There is an interaction effect, and we can see that factor A got no effect since no increase or no decrease and for factor B for effect since there is an increase from low to high and last but not least okay there is no effect of A and B no effect of A and B both does not increase or no decrease but they are not parallel so there is an interaction effect means that the main effect A and B okay only uh, interact and give an uh, effect to the response value. But if the main effect were to be independently used, it will not be significant because there is no main effect of A and B. Okay, class. Uh, do you have any question based on the uh, discussion of the interaction plot and how we can find the main effect and the effect of the interaction plus please remember uh, this particular concept could be asked to you conceptually or using calculation so please make sure you know how to do uh, how you know how to find the average response for each of the factor and how to plot this particular interaction plot okay class class Okay. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay. okay. Okay, class. Last but not least. Okay. Last but not least. Last but not least. Okay. I would like to show you how you can uh, do this particular exercise 4.3 on page um, 148. Okay, 100, 148. Okay, so I have prepared the uh, the Excel for you. Okay, let me stop share for a while. Okay, let me share with you my Excel. Okay, let's see how we can perform the ANOVA for this particular data now. This is how I uh, I in, uh, key in the data class. Eh? So remember, the way you key in must represent your actual data. So if you wrongly key in, then your Excel cannot run the analysis for you. Okay. So in this case, class, how many replication do we have? Class, how many replication? If let's see. Let me find my pen. Okay, class. What is my R here? What is my uh -huh. R class? Four. Great. What is my A? Let's say factor A here. What is the level of factor A? How to find the level? Uh -huh. R. Factor A, this is your factor A. So this is the first one, this is the second one. So A got two. Oh, what about okay. factor B? So factor B, we got one, two, three. So your B is three. Okay. Uh, how many N? So one, two, one, two, three, four. Four multiplied by three, twelve, twelve, we got twenty-four, right? Okay, so that's how you 
identify. So you have 24 response variables. Is it 24? But, um, is it 24? Right, right, 24, right? So now, okay, let's say we have this particular exercise. I'm not going to uh, do it for you, but I just want to show you uh, how we can define different uh, levels uh, because just now we, we are dealing with two by two. Now we have two by three. Okay, so let's uh, see how we can uh, do the analysis. Go to data, go to data analysis, choose two factor with application. Okay, now choose your data. My data is from here. Or if you wish to just include the data, okay, you can also include only the data. Okay, but please make sure you understand factor A involves male and female, and factor B involves these three types of people. Okay, then finish. Go per sample, we have four. Okay, four. If you wrongly key in the number of uh, replication, everything will be wrong. Okay, so alpha, I think alpha is 0 0.05, the same. So the input range, I would like to put it somewhere here. Okay. And then, um, okay. Number of rows. So, input range. Okay, so in this case class, please make sure it, the, the, the Excel need you to highlight the whole, uh, including the level uh, of factor A and level of factor B. Okay, so please make sure you keep the way you highlight the data includes the factor A level and factor B level. Okay, so that they can come up with this particular male and female. Otherwise, they cannot uh, identify okay, which one is for which. Okay, So in this case, if you can see from the Excel the data, Excel result, okay, now you, you have female. So now this particular summary is for female of young adult, middle adult, and over 40. Okay, That's why you have all the sum here. This sum is referring to this particular sum. The second sum is referring to the second column, middle adult, and uh, over 40 is 34, and the average is this one. So you can take this for your table of mean. The same goes to male, okay? For the average value of uh, young adult, middle adult, and over 40. And then the total is given by the summary here. And you can refer to your uh, ANOVA table as given from your Excel. Okay, so here you can clearly see uh, whether you can reject or fail to reject. In this case, class, do we reject the statement of the null hypothesis of the interaction? Let's see, we are talking about the interaction. Is the interaction significant or not? Class, is the interaction significant or not? If you are using your, let's say you are using your p-value, and your um, alpha value. And alpha is given by 0 0.05. Is it significant or not significant? Plus interaction. Plus. Hello, anyone? Anyone class? Why are you so quiet? Can someone please compare p-value and alpha or if you wish to use your distribution of your F, your F CB is given by what? 3.5. 3.55. And your F Uh, your F 
fast is 0 0.6. Your F fast is 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is somewhere over here. Reject or fail to reject lah. Class. Are you all with me class? Can someone please? Can someone please? So in this case, fail to reject the now hypothesis. So no significant interaction effect. Okay, so you can press for row and column. So this one is for factor A and this one is for factor B. So you can do your uh, analysis of uh, do we an over verification for this particular exercise? Okay, class.